Today, we're going to be creating a Notion template based off of one of my favorite books, Atomic Habits. Recently reread it to start off the year, and James Clear gives a lot of great ideas that you can apply with a Notion template. So we're going to be using this one that is on the screen right now. You name your habit, the type of habit, progress, how you can get better each week, and then seven days worth of checkboxes. What's really cool about these checkboxes, if you miss two days in a row, you get a failure for the week. The formula over here gives you the percentage of how you are doing. And then we have templates built for both good and bad habits. So for example, if you open up this good habit over here, first you have your identity, how you can make that in your personal life, as well as your objective accountability and consequence, followed by the cue, craving, response, and reward. I'm gonna be recreating this from scratch. And if you want the template, click down below and download it 100% for free from Gumroad. All right, so we're gonna start creating this. The first thing when you do is name your database atomic habits, and then go over here to the database section and Table. We're going to go over here and click a brand new database. So what we're going to start doing is creating the different columns that are associated with it. So we're going to delete this one over here, delete the property, and we're going to start over here and press this plus icon. Next, we're going to grab type of habit, but that's going to be under a select. So we'll just put type habits. Up next, we're going to go over here and do progress. But first, let's also make that into a select progress. We're going to have a text column and we're going to say one thing I can improve. We're going to make these a little bit shorter because we're about to add in a bunch of checkboxes. So click the plus icon, make sure you go over here to the checkbox and we're just going to name this as day one. And I decided to do only seven days. That way you can refresh this every single week and make sure that your habits are sticking. Easy way to duplicate these checkboxes instead of going to the right each time is you go over here to edit property and just duplicate this. So click this six more times, three, four, five, six, and seven. You are gonna have to rename these ones. A little bit of annoying, but it's way, way faster than going over there. Just doing that each time. So bear with me for a second while I change those over. And then we're gonna create two formulas. So go over here, type in the formula of this one as success. And the success one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. This one is pretty easy. So what we're gonna do for type of habit, we're gonna create a few different options. So go over here and click edit property. And then you see this option section, click add an option. So in the book, James talks about three different types of habits, positive, neutral, and negative. So we're gonna recreate those over here. So positive, and put a plus, neutral, equal sign, right? And then we're gonna do negative, with a minus sign, enter. And then for me, I like to rearrange these all when I'll put positive at the very top and negative at the bottom. Up next, you have progress. So a few different options that you can put over there as progress. For me, I wanna make sure it's like habit or lifestyle, right? Then you have like no progress, some progress, almost there. And you can really do as much as you want, but I think these four are Pretty good for this video. So you guys can see them in order. No progress, some progress, almost there, and then have it. So what's cool now is you go over here and you collect these. So positive, neutral, and negative, you know, progress, and choose those. This is just a text box over here. So one thing that James talks about is if you get 1% better every single day, that is 38 times better throughout the year. So one thing you can do is each week you can talk about one thing that you can improve on. If you want to do it daily, you have the opportunity to do so as well. I prefer just putting a specific note on that side of things. And then here's the check boxes to make sure that you're accountable. Now, one thing that we're gonna have to do a little bit later in the success is make sure that you click it every day. If you miss two days in a row, it's gonna be a failure for the week. But first, we're gonna do the formula section that tells you pretty much your percentage times doing it that week. So convert each of these to a specific number and divide by seven. That way you guys can get the percentage. Now, I know it might sound a little bit complicated, but once you do it a few times, it is pretty basic. So we're gonna go to the formulas thing. We're gonna first do is to number over here. You see that? And then we're gonna prop in the specific column. So we're gonna do prop. And then easy way to do it is you just click this, right? So prop day one, and then make sure you close that out. You can see it's a zero there, right? We'll just click done just to show you it works. One, zero, awesome. So we're gonna do this for all the other days as well. Let's add these up too. This is the first part of the formula we wanna do that. So three, four, five, six, 
and seven changes out. Now what you want to do is divide this by seven. So we're going to add all these up and then divide by seven. Click done. Perfect. So you guys can see right now, if we start adding these up over here, we're going to get eight decimal. So we want to have that as a percentage. Go over here, click this one, two, three, and then you see a percentage. But this still isn't as clean as I would like it to be. So we're going to round this. So you're going to do is click over here and we're going to add in round like this. This time, you're going to multiply this by 100. So times 100. Again, close this out on the outside. And then we're also going to do round another one of these divided by 100. And click done. And you guys can see now this is well rounded rather than that nasty decimal. So that is how you can accomplish that. Up next, we're going to be creating our success formula. And what we want to make sure is we want to have two days in a row that are clicked. Otherwise, it's going to be a failure for a week. So for example, if we had it like this, it's technically a success for the week. But if we had it like that, that is a failure, even if we have day six. Now we're going to base this around an if statement with a bunch of ors that are associated with it. So first, what we're going to do, we're going to do an if, we're going to put two number. And once again, we're going to prop in our examples. So prop day one, right? And then we're going to do plus day two. And then we're going to do is less than one. And then put a comma. We're going to put over here, fail that. And then put success. Close this out. And this is just an example for you guys. So this only looks at day one and day two. Success, right? Because two of them are clicked. One of them is clicked. And then if we have zero, it goes into a failure. So now we're going to want to do this also for day two and three. So so to make this for some of the other days of the week, we're going to go back into this formula. We're going to put or after one, and then we're going to copy or all the way through the first two number and put this over here. And now we're going to do day two and day three. And just to test that works, we're going to remove this or at the very end and click done. So now, right, it's going to show failure. But if we click day two, it is a success, right? Day one and day two, great. But now two and three, it is a failure. So I'm gonna copy this over for all the other dates. I'm gonna put the formula down below in the description if you guys wanna copy it just to save some time rather than fully type. So now that the formula is in here, you guys can see it is a fail, right? So still a fail, still a fail, still a fail because of those two over there. Now it is a success. Let's say we have these two that are blank, it is a fail say we have that. So it completely works for all the different logical cases. We're going to create the templates for both the good and bad habits. We're going to start off with a good habit. So go to the top right over here, click new template, and we're going to put good habit just like that. And then you can add an icon. Let's add in the smiley face over on that side of things. So this is going to grab you all the information that is already on the specific database, but we're going to add a lot more to it. So first what we're going to do is have a call out. So Let's grab that over here. So slash call out. And this is really for your identity. You know who you want to become. And below that, we're going to create our contract. So it's like our accountability contract. And I'm going to create this into a table. So do slash table. And we're going to do three columns on this one. So up first, we're going to have objective followed by accountability and consequence. Then we're going to make this a full size. You can click that over there and it takes up this. One other thing you can do really quick is just fold these. That way it stands out. All the way. Below, we're going to start putting our four laws. And what I'm going to do is create a toggle list. So you can do H2 and that is your toggle heading. And then you can put your specific ones over here. So I'm starting with obvious, which is your queue. Now, I already have all this written out for the four specific laws as well as what I want under the the headings. So I'm going to copy that over and kind of go through them with you guys. So here are the four you can see over here at obvious. I will behavior at time and location talking about putting your new habits into action as well as habit stacking. So after I complete a specific habit, I'm going to do this habit next. And then you have an area where you can design your own environment. So that way you can be more productive at doing your own habits. Next, we have the craving section. So you can talk about specific groups that you can join 
or your opportunity and benefit from doing that specific habit daily. Next is the response, how you can make it easy. James talks about the two minute rule. So you can put over here how you can do this goal, you know, how you can do this habit as little effort as possible. And lastly, the satisfying side of things, which is immediate satisfaction. Now for the bad habit side of things, we'll just put bad over here, widen the icon, put in this like puking emoji. And then it's gonna be very similar, except everything over here is going to be flipped. So again, I have all this down below in Gumroad. So same thing for the cues, how to make it unattractive, how you can make it as difficult as possible, and then your immediate punishment if you end up doing that bad habit. So that was my Atomic Habits Notion template. If you guys wanna learn a lot more about Notion, I have a full beginner's course right over here to take you from not knowing Notion, becoming very comfortable with the software.